Hello, it's a pleasure to see so many of you here. First of all, let's say thank you to Jack Payne who last week set off a bomb in Lower League Look Towers which has led to today. Ladies and gentlemen, you know who it is. Proper wallop. It's the Lower League Look. 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 Different, I think, tonight, because what we usually do is go back to the beginning of your career. Yeah. However, there is that many questions that have come into our inbox for you that I don't think we'll have time to go back to the beginning. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're going to... You are wearing pants, by the way. Is that... Cause, uh, yeah, I've know, got shorts on, don't worry. That's fine. It's just not explicit. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um. So we're going to go back, but we're not going to go too far back into it. Um, we're going to really focus on sort of the clubs that are in and around League Two, and then one in particular that's in League One. Um, I'm sure you know which one that is. That's yeah, that, I do. Yeah, yeah. That's not not a great story of how they got there, but we'll come on to that. Um, so Harry, you started at Villa, didn't you? Is that am I right in saying that you started at Aston Villa? Yeah, yeah. I had about nine, ten years there. Oh. Was it Steve Bruce back then? Yeah. It was um, I, it was Brucey for a bit, and then Dean Smith was the last manager. Hmm. Nice. Um. So you ended up on loan a few times from Villa. Uh, you ended up at Stevenage. You've done Crew, and you've done Newport. So three League Two sides there. So that's that's good for us because it means that they'll watch this. Um. How were those three clubs then? Because we we see you getting a lot of abuse from fans from different clubs. A lot of abuse. I've never seen Stevenage fans giving you any abuse. No, I had a really good time at Stevenage. Yeah. What, yeah, what was really it, what was it like? First loan, I think I was 18, yeah. maybe maybe just turned 19. I think I was 18. I loved it there. It was a really good group. And it was a, it was a really old group. There was just um, there was a couple young boys and then there were some really experienced pros that had good careers. And mm. it was just a great atmosphere there. The training ground was good. Every day was fun in training. I played a fair bit, fair amount for my first loan compared yeah. to the other loans. It was the most I played and it was a really good group. I, I just remember going in every day and, and just really enjoying it. Yeah, well, I mean, so there was there was something I noticed about you when I was reading through sort of your, your career is that every club that you went to, your managers all kind of said the same thing, which was there is a top player in there. Like, there is a very, very good player in there somewhere. We've just got to get him focused yeah. to be that, that player. So what, we, we've got Stevenage, we've got Crew. Is it true at Crew you offered to pay, play for free? You offered to cover your wages? Not essentially my wages. I think it was um, it was when Bruce, he was manager, and I, I was desperate to go out and play. I'd done the first... I'd done Stevenage and I left in January because there was a couple of League One clubs that were interested in there. It was in League Two. And um, I left alone early in January and then just nothing, everything fell through. So I ended up staying at Villa and playing 23s. And I was gutted that I'd left Stevenage. Mm. And then first half of the season, the following season, I got injured. So I missed the loan window again. So it got to January and I was like, I need to be going and playing again. Like, I miss it. And uh, my friend was at Crew as goalkeeper coach and I spoke to him and um, it all seemed good like I knew Crew's history of bringing through players I knew quite a lot of the players that were playing in the first team that have gone on and, and got moves and are doing well now and I was just desperate to go there and play and the yeah. only thing that was Villa wanted a thousand a week if I didn't play and Crew didn't want to do that so I, right. I think I said something like I was due a sign on fee that summer and I said you just I just thought I was convinced I was going to go and play and said, if you, um, every time I don't play, just take a thousand off the sign on fee. And looking back, it's, it's a good <laughs> job I didn't because I would have ended up with no sign on fee because I didn't really play. <laughs> <laughs> was that, was that David Artel then that signed you at crew? Yeah, Artel was gaffer. Yeah. What did, what did Artel think about your socks? I was going to say, he told us, he told us a story about your socks. What, my socks being low? Yeah. I can't really remember, to be honest. Like, there's been quite a few managers that don't really like my <laughs> socks being low. So I can't remember if he was one or not that, that didn't he like was. It. He was one that didn't like it. He said, yeah. he said something along the lines to us of there was yourself and another lad who always had your socks down low. And he says he pulled you in for a conversation. And he said something like, 
is it worth playing with your socks down low to potentially not get noticed off someone because you think you've got it was something about you want to play with that and you want to look different. It was something along those lines. Yeah, it was it was about if you if you've got a club watching you that expect you to be sort of professional and proper, is it worth risking them not looking at you because you've got your socks around your, your ankles? Yeah, at least I took I took that on board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you've you've done all right. Yeah. Yeah, you've done it's yeah. been all right. Yeah. My main thing I remember at crew was I'd been in and out of the team and had a couple injuries. I, I really suffered with my ankles when I was there. And I just got my first little run in. I played two on a bounce, played Saturday, scored, I think it was away at Newport and we won. Played Friday and it, it came up to Easter, so we played good Friday. And yeah. I didn't I didn't play great at all. And I scored like 88 minutes to make it one all the way at Barnet. And I remember thinking, thank fuck I've scored because... I didn't want to get dropped for Monday because we had Port Vale in the derby and the season was pretty much over. Like we had nothing to play for. And I remember that was sold out and all my mates were going, I thought, oh, I think fuck off score because now I'll definitely be playing Monday. Yeah. And then we went in Sunday and I remember we were in Saturday, Sunday game Monday and Chelsea playing Spurs at home on a Sunday. And the guy said to me, you're going tomorrow. And I thought I was starting. So I was like, no, no, I'm not going. And like, that's that's a big thing to miss. But I thought, nah, to, to play Monday, like, don't go. Yeah. And then he's pulled me in the office. And it was actually, um, it was April 1st. So it was, what's it called? April Fool's Day. Yeah, April Fool's Day. So um, he's pulled me in the office and said, you're not playing. And I was like, nah. I thought it was April Fool's. Day. It's just April Fool's, isn't it? Like, I'm playing. I just got two and two. We got four points. Like, I'm, I'm playing. <laughs> and he was like, nah, you're not. And I think it went back and forth for quite a while. And... We had a bit of an argument and I didn't end up starting and I went to the game. I think I remember getting in my car and just driving off and, go, and going to the Chelsea game. And Did I got you win? Monday and he wasn't happy. Yeah, um, no, we actually lost 3-1. We was 1-0 up and, and we lost 3-1. I think it's the first time we won at the bridge in like 26 years. And oh, I can't yeah. sum the weekend up that day. Oh, yeah. listen, do you know what? I can actually remember that game because I'm, I've followed Chelsea for years as well and by... Misses his brother as a Spurs fan. So I can remember being there and he was giving it big licks to me on that as well. So yeah. Yeah. But bad bad times. Around. Bad times. Yeah. See, you thought that's why you follow League Two clubs and then you can never be let down because you're always let down. That's Wait, how it, that's, that's how it works. That's not the fun. I'm a Hartlepool <laughs> fan. Come on. I mean, I'm let, to be fair, let, Harry, let, let down is my profession. <laughs> let's be honest, last time Bradford went to Chelsea, it didn't go too badly. So I'm <laughs> I'm all right with that. We we smashed. Yeah, we won the double that year, though, so I can get over yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Would have been a treble. Would have been a treble if you could have got past Brad. <laughs> um, well, look. So did, when you got pulled in, was it Artel that pulled you in and said you weren't going to be playing? Was that? I remember. It was, I remember all the staff being in there. Did he tell you why? Um, I, th- I don't think he even remember. I think Kenny, the assistant, I think he said most, and it was like if you don't score, you don't really do anything. And, it was something to the lines of that, and we, we went back and forth quite a bit. And... Hmm. But you'd scored two in two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, this is a bizarre. But you see that, to be fair. You see that happen quite a lot. Um, well, you ended up going on one more loan before you ended up leaving Villa, which was to Newport. Anything eventful at Newport? I'm not, I'll be honest, I've not. Apart from Dom Telford, I've not seen much excitement at Newport for years. So, uh, you know, who, who was it who brought you in? Was it Flynn? Yeah, Flynn was Gaff. You know what? Newport is. It's tough to look back on, and like be negative about it because uh, I did enjoy it there, and it was a good mm. group, and that's probably the only place I've ever been, especially like outside of Villa where I'm there, and I. I wasn't knocking on saying why we're not playing because the team was doing so well. I signed on deadline day, but didn't go till mid Feb because I'd been injured. Yeah, and I'd been injured for the whole of the season. And I think the first I signed and came trained on a Friday and was on the bench on the Saturday against City in the cup. So oh, fair play. went in and I think the boys won like thirteen out of the last seventeen games and got to the playoff final. So. I, there was never a stage where it's like you've really earned enough to go and start because the, the boys literally yeah. won every week. It was just I wanted it to come on more when he was making subs and yeah, I, I got a lot of time for Flinny. I liked him and I think, I I think everyone was that, does. I was going to say was that the season when Padraig Armand was absolutely on fire? Yeah, yeah, with Podge and Jammer up front and they scored loads and mm. 
I always played up front and I'd never really played on the wing. So it's kind of, I'm competing with them too. My only like thing I look back is I think I could have done really well as an impact sub there the last 20 minutes when he was making yeah. changes. And especially at Wembley, like we got to Wembley. It's the only time I've ever been Wembley. And I, ne I never got on. I think I got about 40 tickets that day. And Newport were actually brilliant. They they paid for all the tickets for like, I, I think I had about 30, 40 tickets and they paid for all of them. And they put a bar on after the game and they, they really looked after everyone's family and friends. It was, I was just gutted that I didn't get on. They just didn't put you on. You lost, lost 1-0, I think, to Tranmere, isn't it? Yeah, they scored like 120. I mean, it went to extra time and it was mm. boiling. and yeah. It was special. I've been Wembley so many times as, as a fan and... That's the only night where the night before the game, I couldn't sleep. I was so excited. And I wasn't even starting. It just felt magic. We stayed on Wembley Way. And that night, just the, the whole two days just felt magic. And then to not get on, I was gutted. Yeah, I, I, can, I can imagine. It's, yeah. Well, we now come to the clubs where it gets interesting. <laughs> this is where it gets fun. Because you then left Villa in the summer and you signed for Carlisle. <laughs> Now I've got a question immediately. If we had this sent in, like, what what's your thoughts? What's your relationship with Carlisle? Because I think you've gone to a point where every time you play them, they expect you to score against them. Yeah, I don't really know. Carlisle's a strange one because I look back again, and I had some great times there. It was a good group. It was probably a young group, and I lived with Byron Webster there, and I, I look back and I remember Carlisle, and I, I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, it was good there. I had a really good season. It was cut short. I, it was my first season away from Villa. I got 11 goals, 7 assists. And I had all them by the end of Jan, and I got injured after. And, like, we had some good days. Like, against Cardiff, we went to Barnsley and beat them away in the League Cup 3-0. It was, it was some good times. That There were some bad times. It, the club wasn't run very well at mm. all. But under Presley, he'd done his best to try and run it well. And... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, things turned when I, I probably fell out with people behind the scenes more than the actual fans. And I think the fans thought that I was coming for them by not celebrating and I was shushing them up. I was never actually doing that to the fans. I was doing that to the board because I didn't agree with stuff that was going on behind the scenes. But and you've never said that, though. This, this is the thing. Like, you've never... And I think this is where a lot of the... The, the, the view of you comes from like because you do all these things but you don't explain these things so people just have to make up their own they've got their own narrative on it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that celebration was never towards the fans I think it turned toxic with the fans when I was ill in the week it was just before Christmas and we had Colchester away on the Saturday and I was ill I don't think I trained Tuesday Thursday Friday and the boys were travelling Friday and I had tonsillitis and they was leaving Friday and um, I was just starting to get a little bit better. But it was leaving Friday and the gap was like, look, we're travelling Friday. You're not going to play. There's loads of games coming up. Just stay and train Friday, Saturday, come in Monday. So like Friday, I went in, just done a gym session. Same on Saturday, had Sunday off. And again, Chelsea were playing Spurs on the Sunday at Spurs. So like I've missed the game Saturday due to illness. And then Sunday, like I got the train Saturday night, gone to London. And it was the first game at Spurs' new ground, like gone there, 2 0 up at half time, like buzzing. And I've gone on Twitter after the game and um, got loads of notifications. And I thought, that's funny. And someone's took a video in the, in the bit before you, where you get a drink and food and that. And Chelsea fans are singing and they can see me like on the stairs singing. <laughs> and obviously, every Carlisle fan thinks I've, I've missed the game to be ill and then gone there. And it was like, I think you I had. Told, you were told not to go. Like, I wasn't fit to play again. It was a lot different going to watch a game on a Sunday yeah. than there is to running around on a Saturday after not training all week. Exactly. And I think I remember messaging a Carlisle fan private and he was saying, what's going on? And I explained that to him and then he, like, cropped messages and and put them out. I think he started giving me some and I was like, look, we're 18th in the league. I'll take my goals away. You're bottom of the league. I like, have some respect. And oh. it, yeah, it didn't go down well. <laughs> I can see why, to be fair. DMs yeah, yeah. to fans always turn round and go badly, don't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I should I should have known better. I was just I felt good in it. It was nearly Christmas. We just we just turned Spurs over two 0 I was... <laughs> and I just thought, fucking hell, like I've had a good day. I don't get what the problem is. Yeah, but well, yeah. And after that, we played Bradford actually on. On Boxing Day, and I was warming up, and it was singing Chelsea Rent Boy. And then when I came on, they was, and I thought, nah. All right. 
yeah. So that, that's when it turned a bit. But that, that actually like brought the best bit of form out of me. I went on a mad run then, so... You seem to be at your best when people are giving you shit. Yeah, not all the time, but I do enjoy it. Of course, yeah, you can tell you enjoy it as well. Yeah. Um, there's certain players that do. There's certain players that are just kind of made for the abuse. Like, we we had Dean Windass back in the day, and he, 90 minutes, he got abused from minute one till the end from opposition fans. But he would play out of his skin and he'd be man of the match and score nearly every week. Yeah. Certain players thrive on it. Um, well, I actually remember the one when it was that Hartley pulled away last season and we was about 25 minutes in and I've not had a touch and when I did have a touch it was bouncing off me and I thought fucking hell like, what are we going to do and, I, and I'd gone down I was getting no stick and I remember someone went down and I just turned to the fans behind me and started giving them stick and they started giving it me back and then for the next two three minutes like they was all singing something about my hair and booing me and I think like 28th minute I scored and I thought it was a busy, it was a busy old stadium last season, uh, last year at the Vic, and the Hartlepool fans are an easy bunch to wind up. <laughs> you just do a little thing, and the whole stadium just turns. Yeah, I remember. I needed. I thought I need something here. What am I going to do? So I started giving some of the fans stick, and they gave me back, and it and it worked straight away. <laughs> well, when you bag two for a short <laughs> periods of time, I was raging. <laughs> I remember, you weren't even I meant remember. to be playing. Well, that, that was the thing. I remember the messages. So we were Grant at that point believed that Hartlepool could still break into the playoffs, and he he was messaging me saying we, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and he was like McCurdy's out this weekend, and I think on the Friday the first thing came out that you were going to be in the squad, and he just texted me going, "Fuck nah, fuck off." <laughs> and then the teams came out, and he was like, "This is not going to be good." I was like, "You're getting pumped. You are getting smashed today." Um, and anyway, yeah, they did. Well, speaking of winding fans up, you left Carlisle and you went to Port Vale. Now, you've got a really good, I, want, I don't want to say love-hate relationship with Port Vale because I feel like that's probably a, a massive... It's an amazing, really, amazing relationship. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's the thing, and I think people don't get this. When you're on the pitch, it's different to when you're off it. Like, I don't believe for a second that, I mean, you might do, but I don't believe for a second you go home and, like, after Bradford last season, I don't think you went home and sat there going, fucking Bradford's a shit all. I no. mean, you might have done. <laughs> no, I think that Bradford... <laughs> <one was literally, laughs> you did, didn't you? You went home, you were like, yeah, it's a shit all. Yeah, it was on the coach and, like, we were playing cards and, like, music's on, we've had a good time and it was just like, how can I wind them up? It worked. It wouldn't well, have been anything on. like thought about. It. It's not like I literally would have just got the photos, gone on Instagram, typed the first stuff that comes to my head, and post it. And then <laughs> next well, day, we'll come the comments, to that, that, that game. There's, just, there's just no filter, is there? Nah. <laughs> no. And do you know what your issue is? I think sometimes you do it and then you realize oh, probably shouldn't have done that. Mm. But someone's always screenshot it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, well, we'll come to that Bradford one because I, I kind of, I've got my story where I agreed with it, so we'll come to that. Um, Port Vale, what, what went wrong at Port Vale? I mean, Grant, I think you wanted to cover this one we were talking before, like about the Port Vale situation. Mm. I, I don't really know to be honest. I, I'd left Carlisle, and it was the season after COVID, and and I had a good season, and I probably expected to get a lot more attention than I did that summer. I thought I've only just left Villa. I'm still quite young. I've gone on and proved it. And I, and I thought I was going to have a lot more options than I did. And I actually had nothing. I remember everyone's back in pre-season. It had been a long wait because it had been like four or five months, mm -hmm. maybe even longer. And it's the longest time I've, I've had off since being in football and and the phone's not going. I remember it gets to a stage where you're like, I could be in trouble here. And you've gone from looking at like thinking, you might nick champ to like, oh, all of a sudden you're looking at, well, let's go League One. And then League One's out the option. And it's too late to go to League Two because everyone's already got their squads. And it's like, what are we going to do now? And I knew I know uh, Roger really well that's at Port Vale and, and my granddad's really close with him. I think my granddad like, pulled in a favour and said, can you come and train me just to keep fit? So I trained there and and done well. And they, they offered me a one-year deal and it, it, was, it was a terrible contract. And it was just a one-year deal. And I literally just thought I'll go there. I'll be there two months. I'll start playing. I'll do well. I'll either get offered a new contract or we'll look at moving on in January. Hmm. End of the season, it just never really happened. 
Well, you yeah. you were you went on loan, didn't? Sorry, no, sorry, you went you were transfer listed in December. I think it was, wasn't it? Were you put on the transfer list in December? Yeah, I think the relationship got a bit strained with the gaffer. I was getting frustrated at not playing and, and for the reasons why not playing. And and I just kept going in and in and, and, and just kept asking him why I'm not playing. And it turned a bit toxic. And then mm. he, he said to me, you can leave in Jan. And he actually got sacked towards the end of December, just before Jan. So I was thinking, like, thank fuck for that. Like, fresh start, we can go and play now. And I remember Pewey took over. Yeah. All, the, all the boys loved him there and he took over and he'd done a meeting saying look fresh late everyone's got a fresh late like it was two days before a game i remember training well that day and pulling him after saying look i know you've said fresh late like i'm on the transfer list what, what's the script and he was like no nah, you're still on the transfer list did he, then, did he uh, why? was there any any particular reasons why nah, not really I was, I was in the squad for the saturday and he's not named the team. And I, I remember I've got driving to the game thinking you could actually start today. And I've gone in and um, he's named the 18-man squad. I'm not in the squad. And it's, it's the best I've ever took it. I would have took that horrendously at certain stages of my career, probably 99% of it. Mm. And I remember like, it's probably the most mature I've ever been. I went to the gym, done a session, stayed and watched the game, like went in before the dressing room, said what, like, good luck to all the boys. They won. And then it's, it just, nothing really happened from then onwards. It, I was just out of the plans. He yeah. pulled me two days later and said, "We're signing, uh, we're signing another boy, so the squad's full now. So I'm taking you out. So you're getting unregistered, and that's tough to take from a team in, mm. the, in the second half of the table in League Two. So from then on, I knew I had to leave. I think Morecambe came in, and they um, to go on loan." And just the way it was with the time with COVID, I just didn't want to go. Like there was mm. no fans in stadiums and I would have had to travel out and a half. There was no accommodation there. And I just thought, I'm just going to train it. Yeah, no one wants to go to Malcolm. Did your registration come through by the time that Daryl Clark came in? Yeah, so what happened was the window had shut and had not gone anywhere. And Ben Petty, who, who was brilliant, he's at, Leicester, now. he's at Leicester now. I had him at Villa in the youth team and under 16s and I got on with him really well. He just said to me, what's going on? I said, look, I'm not playing even unregistered. I've just got to train till the end of the season. And he said, we've had a few boys go out on loan. Do you want to come here and, and play and train with us? I only ended up being there for about three weeks because I was still signed at Port Vale. You can only play two games as a trialist if you was registered for another club. But mm. I had three, four weeks there and that was probably what I needed to just get that bit of love back for football and that, and stick around because it was pretty low at that stage, getting unregistered from Port Vale and not getting anywhere in summer. It was, it's probably the lowest I've been in football. Mm. Fair play. Well, we kind of come to your highest point in football, I'm going to say, Swindon. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. This is the part that everyone wants to talk about. Isn't oh, it? This, this is, is why, where, this is why we rush where, through everything else. This is where everyone, this is where all the questions have come in. And whatever, yeah. The moment everyone's been waiting for. So I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask the. the I've kind of tried to structure the questions in an order, yeah. um, and I think the. The I think the main one, and this isn't just from Swindon fans. This is from everyone, really. What clicked? At Swindon, like what, ha, what, what, what was different in that Swindon squad? Because we asked Jack Payne this, you were under an embargo. There was limits on wages that could be paid out. Everything about the off the field stuff at Swindon said that they should have been in the bottom half of the table. Where Scunthorpe, where Oldham were, who were in the same situations. What was different, or what clicked for you? And at what point did you realise when you were in that squad, fuck me, we can do something here. Yeah, I don't know. When you say like what clicked, I'm not really sure because it, it's clicked before. I'd I had a run at Stevenage, I had a run at Carlisle. Mm. Um it's never clicked but, like that, has it? It just, it just it just clicked for longer. And it's the yeah. longest I've played and and I just felt respected in the squad with, with the staff. They they got me and I got them and I don't know, it was just such a good group. It it was it, it was, it was just so good and, and we had such a good group. When I first went in, it, I remember like Glad's telling me a story a couple of months in, 
And uh, I was there on trial and I would finally got to the stage where that summer no one wanted to touch me. I couldn't even get clubs to take me on trial. And I'd gone mm-hmm. in on trial and it was kind of like, oh, let's just try and enjoy football. If you get signed, you don't. Like, let's just try and enjoy it. So I'd gone in and there was two dressing rooms and there was one with like the sign boys and one with the boys on trial. And I, I remember just bowling in, going straight into the dressing room with the sign boys and like in there telling stories, <laughs> that, having a laugh and that. And then Glad's came in and signed. And he said, he said to Penny, like, who the fuck's that? And Penny was like, just some trialist. And he was like, no way is he a trialist. Like, he's so loud. <laughs> no way he's a trialist. And I just, I just felt so comfortable from, from the minute you made I got yourself, there. Made yourself at home straight away. Yeah, I think I was just so carefree where, like, football had been so bad for the last 18 months. It was like, it's just nice to be with a fresh group. And I got on with them mm. straight away. And, and I just wanted to go and enjoy it again. And if you'd offered me beginning the season... I heard Payne say, like, we was in embargo. Mm. And I'd signed on way less than an embargo. I'd signed a one-year deal. If you'd said to me, I think I'd have clause my contract if I'd played, involved in 20 games, I got another year. If I had, like, 20 appearances, like, 10 starts, 10 stub, subs, and was just got another contract a year later and enjoyed football, I would have snapped your hand off. Yeah. Like, I literally just wanted to be in a group where I enjoyed it and, and didn't have to go on trial again the following summer. Yeah. What other clubs were you on trial at? Are you able to take? Are you able to say that? I went to Burton for about a week, and that was it. Really, I, I couldn't get a club to take me on trial. What were they saying to you? Like, what? What was the reasons that they wouldn't take you on trial? Just, Did you just have a bad reputation? Yeah, I just didn't want to. They were like, "Nah, like we know what we can do as a footballer, and we know what we think happens off the pitch, so we don't. We don't want it." Well, I mean, their loss was Swindon's gain massively, wasn't it, last season? Um, so, look, it, it clicks at Swindon and it clicks for the whole fucking year, unfortunately, for the other League Two clubs that were involved. Like, that team last season, I mean, you got to the playoffs and we'll come to the playoffs soon because I know that people want to talk about that. You've been giving a lot of shit on Instagram <laughs> about those that playoff. Um and you can blame Jack Payne for that because we said we'd edit that out. And he was like, no, I won't mind it being in. He won't mind that being in. I couldn't believe it's Saturday morning when I seen that. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't believe it when he logged off. Me and me and Grant sat here after. Well, we, had a, we had a bit of a moment, didn't we? We sat there and we went, oh, we feel sorry for anything that we've said now. <laughs> no, no, I think people don't. I, I'm emotional. Like, I have my heart on my sleeve. And... But people don't see that side of you. Because because you've got this bravado on the pitch and you're always laughing and you're always essentially you're always giving someone shit. Yeah. No one gets to see that side of you. And I think like when when Payne said about the, the, the penalty miss and the reaction to it, me and Grant both just went, never expected that. Never ever expected that. Yeah, I think that. people that know me like that, they, they you know, know. I'm up my sleeve, I'm emotional. Yeah. Well, you play through last season, you you're playing under Ben Garner, you've got this group of lads around you. You, you become really good friends with Payne, so much so that you move yourself into his house. <laughs> yeah. You become an unofficial lodger. <laughs> yeah. Can you give us your version of events of what happened there? Because he says, you just came and you kept saying every day, oh, I've made it to day four. Oh, yeah, that was, I remember that. That was during lockdown. I think we clicked from pretty much the first month of me being there, really. like We, yeah. we became close really fast. And I think... I. I I had a flat that I lived with, Hunty, and he just had a kid, so he wasn't there all the time. So, like, when he wasn't there, I used to go around to Paney's and it'd be like, I'd go around for an hour, then all of a sudden I'd go around for dinner and it'd be like, I'd go around for dinner and stay. And then, I don't know, if I'm comfortable with someone that I'm comfortable, I'd just go around and, like, just make myself at home and... There's, you know, there's, there's such a thing as too comfortable, Harry, don't you? You're just, just going to put that <laughs> out there. Like, I'm just going to continue to be really, really reserved here. Like, our spare room's got a baby in it now. <laughs> they tell me if they'd had enough. They did tell you. They t- he told us this. He said he got to day four and he told you to go home and you stayed till six. No, that, that, was, that was different. That was lockdown. I didn't really stay there that much before Christmas. It was probably after Christmas where I started staying there more. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, you, and then in the end, you moved in. Yeah, I, I did pretty much move in. How was your bedroom? And I heard what he said about that. It was, it was a little bit messy, but like, I had no wardrobes. I don't know what he wanted from me. Go buy a wardrobe. But, oh, I'm not going to do that. I had a suitcase. So I used to just throw stuff in the suitcase and then 
it end up on top of the suit. It was a bit messy in the end, I'll be honest. So, so, so it's that whole that... thing when you go and you stay at a hotel for a couple of days, you have your suitcase, you just chuck stuff on top of it by the end of the week. Yeah, it was a bit like that. It just looks like a tip. Bed's never made, yeah. <laughs> but how many how many weeks did you stay there? Well, I actually stayed there from pre-season onwards until I moved. So I was probably there about two two months on my own. Playing golf. Yeah, but the only reason I've done that is because he took everything with him. So I'm just in this gap with nothing. There was no Wi-Fi, no Sky. So I'm just in there like, like how can I well, entertain myself? He, he took the Wi-Fi off you. He took everything. Everything had gone. So I'm just in there like, how am I going to entertain myself? So I made a little golf hole. <laughs> <laughs> Was there not a golf course nearby? Yeah, but not not at night when it's dark and that. Was this a, right? I need to know. Was this like a detached house? Was it semi-detached? Was it? I'm trying to picture it. I think I think it was detached. Right. Well, that's good because if you'd have had neighbours and you're smashing golf balls against the wall. <laughs> no, but it's, it wasn't against the wall. It was cut. I'd put cardboard on the wall, so it was just into the cardboard. Yeah, but did you miss the cardboard? Yeah, like three times. <laughs> <laughs> so so he took did he take all the furniture as well no i had a sofa just a sofa yeah, see right sofa. this is the thing we don't we don't see this we see footballers and we think oh we always think they're getting paid shit loads and we're like they're going back to the big houses you were going back to a house with no wi-fi a sofa and a made golf course in your living room yeah i had fun though <laughs> <It's> <laughs> it sounds sick. like it he it took it dog like well, didn't it? Digs. yeah, yeah. I had fun. Did he did he take your dog as well? Are you claiming the dog or is it his dog? No, not mine. And I've seen people saying that. Uh, one of you said like, "Are you using him for clout?" I'd literally just post messages. I loved him. I got <laughs> I got my mum and dad a French bulldog for Christmas a couple of years ago, so I really like the dogs. Yeah. And then I just love Messi. Well, that's what Jack said. He don't because Jack don't do social media that much. He obviously, just came across that it was your dog. No, um, it's mine. It's, it's always been Painy's. Yeah, it's always been his. It was right, one well, of the questions that we got for Pain was um, who's taking custody of the dog? Oh my god, you could never take Messi away from him. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't want to. You know, to be fair, I, I used to have a dog that was similar, and yeah, you, you get attached. You do get. Yeah, attached. You couldn't. That's his favourite thing in the world. Well, it's like when you turned up at my house in my dream and chased my dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can stay away from my dog. <laughs> Uh, so look, last season then, you, you're absolutely flying. I'm going to ask you a question that I asked Don Telford because obviously you and Telford were kind of like neck and neck throughout the season on goals. It was coming right down to the end of it. At what point in the season did you go in, start going into games thinking, I'm guaranteed a goal this week. I'm, I'm going to score this week. Well, was... like, the first half of the season was a lot different. I was on five goals first half, but I was playing quite regular and I was just buzzing that I was, I was playing most weeks. I was probably yeah. getting like 60, 70 minutes most weeks. And I was just really enjoying football. And um, I didn't actually score that many goals. But mm. the goals I did score were kind of important ones. So I scored when we played Forest Green on TV. And then I, when I came on at Bristol Rovers away and scored. So like the bigger games in that in that league, they were the ones I was scoring in. But I wasn't yeah. actually scoring that often. I was just really enjoying playing football again. So it was probably more... It was from New Year's Day onwards. That's when I kind of just got on a wave and just didn't really mm. fall off. Do you believe, because you got injured, didn't you, sort of around, I think, March time? Yeah, it was, it was an international break in March. We had no game on a Saturday. And I remember doing it in training on, a, I think it was a Thursday. And I thought that was my season done. Well, we did. When we got told that, we thought it That's was That's what the rumour mill was yeah. straight away as soon as it came out. Everyone's like, oh... It was, he's picked up an injury. It was ACL for the rest of the season. No, no, it was it was my um, Salaya, so like near my car, and it, hmm. I felt it pop. It had gone, and I couldn't walk. And I, I just thought that was the season done. I had my scans, and they were saying ten weeks, and it was pretty much end of season. And it, it was like your season's done. Based on the run you guys were on when you got injured, do you believe if you'd have not got injured, you'd have got automatics? I don't know. It's tough to say that because that. The team was so, so big for me. It wasn't like I was carrying the team. Like the, you the were. team so well. <laughs> you <laughs> like were. I, I scored a lot of goals towards the end and was involved in, in a lot of goals. But 
I don't know. There was times in the season where I was fit and we went through bad spells as well. It wasn't like every time I played, we won. You, you looked unstoppable, though, and this was the thing. Like when you got injured, like leading up to you getting injured, we we all said you're going, you're going through you're the playoffs. You did automatics. Like this was, it looked nailed on. It was tough because we was only three points off. We had a better goal difference, so it was actually only one win away from yeah from getting promoted. Yeah, and that, the, that's a that's lot of teams can say that in League Two because it's it is so tight. It's it was a horrible league last year as well. Last last season was one of the tightest I've seen it for years. Mm. It was and a point see... when anyone from eleventh up could have came in the automatics. It was crazy. Yeah, and then you you, you look at it, I think it was like thirteenth that thirteenth up could make the playoffs or going into the last game. It was it was it was mad. Um, so you end up making the playoffs. You came back. You came back for the Hartlepool game as Grant's very very happy about. Um, Stop reminding me, man. Stop reminding me. Smashed Hartlepool. Do you know what? Actually, no. We'll go a bit further back. We'll go a bit further back because I want to talk about your game against Bradford. Um, I think that was get... just before I got injured. Yeah, it was about two weeks before. Did you get Did you get banned for your Instagram post, or did you just get fined for your no, Instagram? I just, got away. I just got fined. Yeah, you just got fined. And that was um, that wasn't actually. You did two two Instagram posts after that game, didn't you? Yeah, it wasn't a. I, I think you'll be on about the shit one. It wasn't that. It was. Uh, it was the referee comment. Was, see you next Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, when you said see you next Tuesday. Yeah, very subtle. Very, very, very yeah. subtle. Um, I think the referee saw straight through it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like my next game back was the following Tuesday, so I remember like thinking I was always going to put something like. See you when I'm back, and it just—I don't know—some things that it just <laughs> seemed poetic. I thought, I'm like, you, you got to say see you next Tuesday." It's—it's it's a bit funny. But, I will say that referee had a mare that game. You know, you looking back, I thought I was convinced I was on the pitch when I handballed it. I was fuming. I, I remember being away on the counter, and it was one all, and it, it was a shit ball, and I ended up catching it. And then. I thought I was off the pitch and I was fuming at him. And I looked back and thought, fucking, I was about three yards on. But you I was still just, claimed it. I was more fuming about the pass because yeah. I thought I was in. And... Well, don't worry, because Payne came to the rescue that day. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he, he, poetic, really. But then your other Instagram post that day, and Bradford fans got really annoyed by this. And I'm, I'm going to defend you here. And I've, I've kind of told you that this before. So you tweeted out, Bradford's a shit all. I want to go home. It's a chant. We all chant it every single day. Uh, every club chants it when yeah. they go away. And I'm on the way home. My missus is driving. We're at a crossroads in Bradford. And I read this post and I can see all the Bradford fans kicking off in the comments. And then I look to the side and I look to the other side and there's a homeless person either side of the car knocking on the window asking for change. And I look down at my phone and I'm like, well, he's got a point. He's got a point. It's a bit of a shit all. Um, <laughs> and the thing is, we like city of culture, mate. It's the city of culture, apparently. City of culture, twenty twenty five. Um, got a long way to go to get that culture. Yeah, we're getting a lot of money invested. You come back in twenty twenty five, it'll be really nice. All our homeless people will be wearing oh, like, oh, <laughs> Um So you didn't get in trouble for that one, but you got in trouble for the referees one. But yeah, listen, that game. I'll be honest, that game where we played you, I. I don't feel like you deserve to win that one. You're going to feel different and say you did. I felt like a draw was probably fair. For, for yeah, we, we like... actually got battered that day. First yeah. half an hour and we was 1-0 down. I remember scoring to make it 1-0. Yeah. And every time I'd scored to make it 1-0 further on in the season, I'd celebrated and we'd gone on and lost. So I remember scoring and just grabbing the ball and I was gutted because I wanted to celebrate in front of the Bradford fans loads. And I thought, no, nah, fuck this. Let's grab the ball and go back just to like try and show that like, we're, we're here to win. And I remember it being one on late on, thinking, "Fucking hell, I should have celebrated." <laughs> well, I, 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 I told Payne this. I, as soon as I saw him warming up, obviously, ex-player, you kind of see it coming. And like I said to my missus, I was just... buzzing for him because it, he took that injury so bad. I think he, he said it was the first time he'd been injured. And I was pretty much living with him at the time, and he was gutted. And hmm. and I felt sorry for Meg the most. She had to put up with him moaning every night. And. Um, <laughs> He, he came back, and I don't think he was fully fit. And we got a penalty, and I knew he'd score, and I was buzzing. 
it was probably the only time that I would have took him scoring over me scoring. And I remember saying it to him, and I actually meant it. And I, I don't think that very often, but I was just buzzing for him. He'd, mm. he'd been out for ages, and he won and the penalty as well, didn't he? He won that penalty. No, nah, no, nah, Ellis won it. Oh, was it Ellis? Oh, I thought he yeah. won it. I thought he came on and won it. Oh, that doesn't yeah, make Ellis me feel as it. bad. How difficult is it as a player when you're out with a sustained injury? Kind of mentally from that point going, oh, shit, I've lost a place. Gonna have to get fit. Get uh, yeah, it's how, different every how time. Come back? Am I gonna come back as strong as I was before? No one likes being injured. It's it's, it's the worst. You, you're away from the boys. You like it's, it's just shit. No one, no one enjoys it. And mm. Penny took it <laughs> one of the worst I've ever seen, but. No one likes being injured. Some people are used to it now, sadly, and they'll they'll cope with it. Everyone copes with it in their own way, and Payne just coped with it terribly. <laughs> Perfect way for him to come back, though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And he's uh. So he came back. I'm going to say it again. He came back against Hartlepool. Um, I think he scored two in that game. Okay, <laughs> Grant is <laughs> Um. But you knew you were going to score, and you, you you knew before you even kicked a ball. Yeah, that's that. Do you want to tell that story? Because we spoke about this before we started recording, and I I think this is a story that everyone kind of needs to hear about how you came back into that. Yeah, so I think I'd been out. I was meant to be out for ten weeks, and it was like maybe six to eight, and I think we'd come up. So I can't remember how long. It might have been four or five weeks, and I'd started getting involved a little bit. I think I'd done boxes on the Thursday, and I'd actually just chose to flying at the time and. And Mount kept scoring, and he had these new boots, and they were different to the ones that I wear. I remember thinking, "Fuck, I need to get them boots because he's scoring so many goals in them." So I've ordered these boots, and then trained <laughs> for the first time on Friday, and I was horrendous. Like honestly, I've missed every shot. And the same thing in the warm up on a Saturday, and I was thinking, "Fuck!" Like I don't know if it's the boots, if it's me, have I lost it? Am I injured? And but I text the gaffer in the week saying, "Look, gaff, I'm fit. I'm fit to play on Saturday." And like, I fancy it, we can still do it. Like, there's four games, I'm going to score and, and get us promoted. And I don't really know where I've got that confidence from, but... <laughs> yeah, I think it's the only time I've ever done that in my career. And and it just felt good because the boys had, had lost a couple and I think they just needed a little boost. And oh, we knew we had to win all four games to get playoffs. Mm. And I, I just remember the four... I, I remember, like, the team talked before and we used to do it going little huddles we've not done before and just saying don't let the season over today like don't let it finish it's such a special group let's not let this end like, let's just try and take it for as far as we can because you know regardless how good the group's going to be it's people are going to move on things are going to change the last time that group's going to be together and it was a really special group and I remember just thinking don't let today be the last time mm. that we're playing for something that means something yeah and you didn't you came on and I think you played against Hartlepool and you scored two <laughs> um, Fucking hell! <laughs> well, no, but look, you, you went on. You won all four of those games. Didn't you? Did you score in every game? Um, no, I scored two that day. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, against Hartley. You two are a bunch of cunts. <laughs> no, we don't do that word. Sorry, B. Forest Green on the sun on the Tuesday, and I, I didn't score that night. I think I set up LB. He scored. And then I didn't score against Barrow. Oh, fucking hell, I could have scored about seven that day. And really saved me, really scored really late on. I, I, I fucking had one that day. <laughs> scored at Walsall and the one that took us to the playoffs. So you get into the playoffs. Yeah. It's coming, right. So you get into the playoffs. First leg, I watched the first leg. You guys were... Fucking dominant, like it was. It was everything phenomenal. It, it was everything we predicted it would be. That first leg. Um, did you score twice in that that first leg? Yeah, I scored twice. It was it was a day after the FA Cup final, and I remember when the dates came out. The like I was going to be missing the FA Cup final, and I was gutted. I, I remember Payne worrying about it. And um, I sat and watched the final at his, and we lost on pens. And I like sat there. I, d I didn't say a word. I was fuming, and Payne was thinking, "Oh shit! Like we need him tomorrow." And he, he hates football right now. Yeah, but you were playing Port Vale. 
Yeah, and we and we were playing, but I remember still going to the game, and all I could think about was that we'd lost the FA Cup final. I, I, I'd not like woke up excited to play in the playoffs. I woke up hating football that morning, thinking, one, I can't believe I've missed the final, and two, like, I cannot believe we've lost to them twice in a year on penalties. Mm. Like, we'd lost the League Cup and FA Cup to Liverpool on penalties, and I just remember thinking, oh, I fucking hate football. And I, even when like it, we'd warming up and that the atmosphere was great, I'd still like not not got into the game and I started really badly, not had a touch first 25 and then that's probably my favourite goal in football just because I, I was playing so badly and mm. and that's just not a goal that I'd normally score. Yeah, it was, uh, was this like, a, was it like a half volley? No, that was the second one. It, it was the header from the corner. Yeah, sorry, and then you went on your knees right next to goal, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, we, we, the thing is, at that point, we'd kind of become... Like we wanted you guys to go on and, and win the playoffs. Like we were, we're not Swindon fans, but it was hard not to kind of get behind you guys. Grant, not gonna lie, Grant wanted Vale. I wanted Vale. Sorry, but that's because he's the Daryl Clark connection. He's he's got a lot of time for Daryl Clark, so you know, unfortunately, Grant wanted Vale. But first leg ends. You guys have absolutely dominated. Do you feel that maybe you were a little too? Overconfident after that first leg, going into the second one. Do you feel yeah, like people, people it comment all the time about like? I mean, me and Willow done an interview and, and saying like, oh, these pair thought they'd won it, but like, I really don't get where that comes from from that interview. I, I, yeah. I, I don't, like, I, I don't get it. I've seen the interview back, and I just don't get people's annoyance at the interview. Yeah, I've, to be fair, I've not seen the interview. I just think. Try, trying to understand like what's what's going through your minds going into that second leg. Are you thinking, you know, this is this is almost a formality, or are you yeah, we, we'd won five like... on the bounce then, and we had a really good away record. We battered them in the league there. Like yeah. they did have ten men for for quite a while in that, but um, I don't know. We just we was in a good place. We shouldn't have conceded. I think last fifteen minutes of the first leg, it was we'd sat back a bit and they scored. They actually could have scored again. Yeah. The thing that stands out for me most on that second leg was how bad we was in the warm up. The pitch was so dry, and I remember in the warm up, I was looking around thinking, "Fucking hell, what is going on? People can't pass the football." Mm-hmm. And we started the game so badly. We should have been one 0 down in thirty seconds. Mm-hmm. They missed a sitter. He missed an open goal, didn't he? I remember it being right in front of the goal. And I, re- I remember, just before the game, the guy into the linesman. She, she was a lineswoman, whatever you call her. And I was getting stick and I said, look, they're, they're going to be in your ear. They're going to kick fuck out of me. Don't let the occasion get to you. Like, don't. I, I was like, just just stick to your decision. She took it terribly. <laughs> and she was like, don't fucking tell me how to rare. And then we should have had a stonewall penalty. It's the most blatant pen I've ever seen. He, he was like Petr Cech stopping the ball. And I remember thinking, I think that's my fault because what I've said to her, but I wasn't saying it like an arrogant way. I was just trying to say to her, look, don't. And don't I'm convinced that she's seen that and thought, no, nah, fuck that. I ain't giving them a penalty. But it was so more. And that, that was probably the only real chance we had in the first hour or so. We, we was we was pretty pony that night. We didn't really create much. Mm. It was weird because the two games were completely polar opposite. I thought the second game was a really, I mean, it's what you would call just a boring game of football. There yeah. was nothing really exciting happened apart from the two, well, the mitts from Wilson and then the carbon copy one, which he scored. I um, and, and then there was the penalty. That was that was really it. it yeah, was I, like, I think I think French had a header. I can't remember when it was. It was either second half or extra time. And that's all I remember us really creating. We had nothing. I remember hardly touching the ball that night. And yeah, I, did, I just didn't really do anything in the game. Mm-hmm. So penalties. Yeah. <laughs> so why is this? You know what I mean, Grant? Why is this on me? So <laughs> I was going to say. Well, we, we mentioned penalties, and then the smile comes out. The infamous smile. Yes. The one thing before the penalties is like whenever we've gone to Port Vale, I get why they don't like me now because maybe the first leg and they'd let me go and I'd scored and I could say I'd over celebrated whatever. But before that, I really didn't understand the hate from Port Vale fans. Like, I'd gone there on fuck all money, never really kicked off a fast, like, train there, got unregistered. They're like, I should hate Port Vale. I've never got given a chance. 
in a yeah. team that like finished. It, it wasn't a bad team, but it like we were nowhere near the playoffs. I think you said that in an interview as well, didn't you? It was, it was oh, yeah, after, I was like, the, I got after given the first one leg of the chance. playoffs. Last game of the season, I got given a chance. It was kind of like play for a contract, and I got and I started left wing back. I'm kind of think like I just don't get why they all hate me. <laughs> I get it now, but like before that, they was making a big deal about me, and I was just thinking I don't, I don't really get it. We played them in January earlier in the season. I got battered in the warm warm up, and I was thinking like I'm buzzing at you're hammering me because I'm probably going to turn it on, but I don't I don't know why you're doing it. Mm. Yeah, there, 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 does, there, there is a, it's a, and do you know what? It's a hatred as well, isn't it? Like, it is a real yeah, hatred they, that they seem they to have. They hate me, but like, <laughs> strange. <laughs> I don't That's actually, like, as much as I probably should, I don't actually hate Port Vale. I, I don't really care about them. Like, I hate Tottenham, and that's about it. Carlisle's the same, really. I just don't really... I didn't have that many good memories at Port Vale. I knew quite a few of the boys and got on with them, and... Yeah, a bit of a laugh sometimes, I guess. We actually spent quite a bit of time there because it was during lockdown, so you couldn't do anything mm. else. So I was in the training ground quite a lot, but the, the hatred's a bit strange. It's one sided. It is, it is a bizarre situation. So I was like, why? Yeah. I'm like, I like it. I don't mind it, but it is a bit strange. So you take your but penalty. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. So you take that penalty and miss. What runs through your mind? Well, I remember it was the most nervous I've ever been. I, I kept telling it was it was on the nineteenth of May, and it was ten years on to the day that Chelsea won a Champions League final. And I remember just thinking it's it's meant to be. It's written in the stars. Like it's gone to pens. I remember saying to a few of the boys like nineteenth of May, like this this is a special day. It's, it's it's meant to be ten years on. Like it's penalties will win penalties, and it started so well. We were scoring. I remember I can't remember who took second. I think Glad's took second. And yeah. Second went up from then on. I just went blank. And then it got to my penalty and I went up and I just, I've never really had a penalty penalty technique and like I'd been practicing them the week before and it was just that two, like two little steps and just hit it, like laces going for top right. And I remember like before each one, I'd like think and concentrate, like just laces, put it through it, he won't save it. And George, I just George went. John Terry it. Yeah, there's no need for that, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's allowed, he's a Chelsea fan. <laughs> I just proper bottled it, to be honest. Like, I got up there, I, I froze, I'd, like, forgot about my technique and just... I was... I couldn't wait to take the penalty, to be honest. And it was so different to how the season had gone. I'd thrived off every bit of pressure and it, and it got to that. And I don't know, I just went a bit out of body, really, and just proper bottled it. When does, when does that hit? Is it from the walk-up? Is it when you get in the box? What no, point from, did that it hit from you? It went, when it went to penalty, my record with penalties is horrendous, to be honest. I, I can't remember ever scoring one. And um, yeah, I, rem I remember going up, and the second I missed, I just couldn't believe that I'd missed because everything had gone so well beforehand. I just couldn't believe that I'd missed. And yeah. I seen people getting fuming that I was laughing. Like, I, I, it, well, I did laugh, that's what it looked like, but I wasn't laughing. It was like, I just couldn't believe it. I was so. Was it a, ner was it a nervous laugh? I was so embarrassed at what I'd just done. I, I literally couldn't believe it. I just thought, what the fuck have you done? Because the second I've missed it, like, obviously the nerves goes and it's like, why have you not just, like, just passed it in the corner? Like, what's yeah. wrong with you? Yeah, well, I remember I remember that night. At least you didn't try and, like, penenka or... I wish I did, you know. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't try and dink it. At least that's a good way to miss. <laughs> it's not. It's not a good way of missing a playoff semi final. It's, oh, it's not a way to miss them. I don't. Well, see if you ever see if you ever get a penalty at Tyne Castle. Can you just put in it? Because it'll be. <laughs> well, not now. Everyone knows we're going to do it. I don't think there's going to be a single hearts fan. Laces into the top right now as well. You've got no chance. Yeah, but they don't save them if it works. Well, if it if it works, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. No, what what I will say is that night, because of how how big you'd been that season and like the 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 attitude and the the character that you brought to last season, yeah. League Two Twitter was the best it's ever been, and it's never been better since that night. I remember I remember the next day I tweeted out, and this isn't this is just a joke, just basically me having a dig at you because I you know that's that's what opposition fans do yeah. i tweeted out to the swindon fans i was like guys this league two balls just landed in my garden <laughs> yeah oh, i've started this i'm gonna finish it i feel bad now 
And I said, it's out in the garden. It says property of Swindon Town written on it in crayon and it's spelt wrong. I said, I think this might be Harry's ball. (laughs) (laughs) Swindon fans kind of found it funny, but it was probably a bit too soon. But I've probably heard too many of them to laugh. It was the first time I might have gave you a laugh then, but I've heard it so many times. Yeah, but that's that it's the obvious joke, isn't it, when it happens. And like for us, like I said, League Two Twitter was on fire that night because everyone, every, I think everyone kind of wanted you to miss who wasn't yeah, a swimmer. I, I remember I like, the pain's already done me. Like, I got a bit emotional and I was on the coach and I was in no mood to laugh. And someone went to me, Have you, have you seen it? And I was like, What? And there's that like Ellison's, Ellison's thing. And I watched it and I didn't want to laugh, but that, that's the first time I'd laughed since. Oh, when he caught the ball on his couch. Yeah, yeah. I thought, fair play. This is fucking funny, that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you go back to Jack Payne's house. Yeah. Is the story, as he said it, is that it? Is that spot on? So yeah, that's the shit that happened. Like... Like, I remember just, he, I was on one side, but he was on the other. I was on YouTube just playing the most depressing songs ever. And I was like, I was just kind of embracing the sadness, really. Just going with it. I was, just, I was, I was, I don't think he's exaggerated either. It probably was that long and. I just couldn't believe that's how it had ended. Seven hours. Yeah, and then we went to London the next day, and like you said, in the car again, and I was like, right, you've you've cried enough now, like, get over it. And we'd gone out as a team. It was planned, win or lose, we was going out. We'd gone to the Prince in Chelsea, and I was like, right, let's let's have a good day. And we'd gone in there, and I've I've literally walked in, and Willows came up to me and hugged me and said, are you you okay? And I was gone again. (laughs) And I think he's actually underdone it. It was... I think it was pretty much all the next day as well on that Friday in London. And I remember being in a bar and a, a girl came up to me and was like, you're right. And I was like, no. And I literally <laughs> sat with her for about 25 minutes, never met. Her. I don't know who she is. And just started crying, just telling her. I literally told her through every game of the season, walked her through my season, explained I'd fucked it for everyone. And she like, she didn't care at all. <laughs> just looking at you with a blank face going, she, she did it. this guy? She felt sorry for me. So she like, she stayed out of politeness. <laughs> I was like, all right then, like, have, have a good night. <laughs> oh, that's made my night. That, that's, that's the exclusive right there. Yeah. <laughs> see, you see, as part of that, did you know at that point that you were not going to be at Swindon next season and that that group was probably yeah, yeah, never going to be together asked, again? If you'd asked me like the week later, what's the chance of you being at Swindon? I would have said like 1%. I thought I'd just done enough where like, I was, I was 100% gone. We'd not got promoted. Even if we had promoted, I think I still thought I was gone. Like Promotion didn't really... I heard Payne say if he got promoted, he 100% would have stayed. Like I, I just had it set that I'd had such a good season. And and like it was what it was. It was amazing. And and I loved it. But it was, it was time to move on because it's a short career. And mm. I just thought that that was it, really. Like The club will cash in. At, club have been in trouble and they'll take the money I'll move on and we'll just always look back and it was a great year well before we come to the transfer window we need to ask you about the player of the season awards because when you Jax assured us when you left his house you weren't dressed like that (laughs) at what point did you think this will be a great idea I'm going for it yeah I remember that well we, we had a game Tuesday so we was in Sunday and I played, so I was just in for recovery. And I remember saying to Gaffer, look, we got this dude. Like, the Gaffer was going as well. There was, there was the Gaffer, Clem went, I think both their wives, Jojo and his missus. And I was like, right, we're going to go. So I had no suit still on the Sunday. So I remember saying to Gaffer, can I have Sunday off? Like, miss the recovery, I'll do it in London and just go, go shopping to get a suit. So the awards at, like, seven. So I've got to train at like half 11, get to London. Chelsea playing at half one at West Ham at home. And I was like, right, you need to buy a suit so you can't go to the game. So it gets to like one o'clock. I'm like, fuck this, I'm going to the bridge. So I've gone to the bridge, watch the game. <laughs> now it's like four o'clock. I've still got nothing. <laughs> All I had was a pair of trainers. I decided I was wearing trainers that I'd got done with like two stars on and the dates Chelsea had won the European Cup. That's the only part of my outfit I've got. And so I've just gone, I've gone to Selfridges, seen this suit, like, Bought this like oversized suit, got a t-shirt, and then just thought, what can I throw with it? And like, gone downstairs, like the accessories, seen that hat, 
and it just all came together. And I remember going to my mate's gaff to get ready, thinking, fuck me, you look the nuts tonight. Like, what an outfit this is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie here. That ain't what we thought. Yeah, I thought, you've done well here. Like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> so, <laughs> was that the same maintain that when you turned up, you are like that? Yes. Yeah, I remember that like, saying, I think it started at seven. So, um, I went and I took, I took two girls with me. I don't, I'm not really sure that happened, but I was like, we'll go we'll go get a drink before we go. So there's a gaff called It. It's round the corner. We'll go there. So we've turned up, gone in, and there's a brunch on, and the whole Luton team's in there. And a couple of the boys like, where are you going? I was like, Player of the Year was my first one. I'm buzzing. I remember Snod saying to me, have you, have you won Player of the Year? I was like, nah, I'm in the team. He's like, fuck that then. So now I've ended up. I think I was a bit late and I've turned up and I've got the glasses and hat on and with two girls. I, I don't think it looked great. <laughs> did you know them two girls or was these? Yeah, no, I did know them. That's I fine. Didn't know them. Didn't, if you were just talk, telling them about your season and just dragged them along. Nah, nah, nah I didn't know them. <laughs> so we, I'm going to be honest, when that picture came through, I genuinely, because of the oversized suit, I genuinely thought it was photoshopped. <laughs> it took me a while until I saw the account, like I followed the account it actually came from to realise that it was legit and you had left, well, not, well, I thought we assumed you'd gone out like that. You hadn't, you just, so basically, because of Chelsea, you ended up dressed like that. Yeah, I think everyone's just meant to be in it. I remember about to go off on stage and Gaff was like, take that fucking hat off. And I remember just turning around, <laughs> smiling and just bowling up on stage in it. <laughs> Yeah, because the picture of all the whole team, everyone was just stood there, and then there's just you looking like you, Kevin and Perry. Nah, that's so rude. It was so much better than that. <laughs> <laughs> but that I remember that what? night, Snod's actually got me and, and the boy Cornick, who's at Luton as well, and he and he got us together, and, and Corn's had a hat on, and he kept saying, get together, and he was like, telling us to swap sides, and I thought he was taking a photo of us. And he showed us his phone and he got a photo of Kevin and Perry up. And... Also, it's not just me that thought it, man. Uh, no, I got that all night. It was, a, it was a common thing. Do you know what, though? Everyone's wearing bucket hats again, though. I actually don't wear them anymore in my trim. I used to like it when the hair came down, but now I've gone off them. I think, I think they're done now. That's confirmed it as well. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Four of them I bought. <laughs> What season. promoted so what promoted the change in trim then? Going from the long hair to then the shorter bleached hair. Because that um, caused us that and caused us stuff. And then the I'll full be honest, on we, we came back after the playoffs went away for a few days, came back and we had a couple meetings. And I was staying at Paney's and he's like, I'm getting my hair dyed. He's got short blonde hair. <clears throat> and he's gone to the moodiest gaff ever to get it done. This old Chinese woman and she looked like she didn't have a clue what she was doing. And I was like, fuck it, I'll get mine done. So I showed her a, to a photo of Torres back in the day, and I was like, do this. So he's got that bleach blonde and, and, and like brown hair, and I thought, oh, I'm going to look unbelievable with this. Like, <laughs> about to go on holiday, I was thinking, this will look the nuts. So we get it done, we're, we're both there. It looks blonde, we've got the shampoo in that, looks blonde, and then she dries it, and we've both got yellow hair. I've got, like, long yellow hair. I'm not sure I can say who everyone said I look like, but... He's not known for the best of things. <laughs> it's not a nickname. Oh, that you really right. Want. Yep. Yeah. I know, I know who this is. I think he's called Jimmy something. It's oh, not what you're yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, James. Yeah, so I was like, fuck this. Like, this needs to go. So, I've gone to the father's <laughs> and was like, all I want is, I want it in a V at the back. So, I was about to go on holiday. I was like, just put it in a V at the back. So, I had that for a while and then... I don't know. The, it was actually Payne's fault I've ended up with a mower because I've gone to get a trim about a month ago and he's done it so short. And I remember coming out and FaceTiming Payne, like, what's he done to me? And he was like, bro, you need to get rid of that. I was like, I can't. What am I meant to do? He was like, get a mower. I was like, all right, sweet. So I've gone to another barber that's got a mower, FaceTiming back, and he's just started crying, like, what have you done? He's like a really, really bad, <coughs> bad older brother, isn't he? Yeah, no, he's the best. I love him. It, it, <laughs> he was so good to me. He was such a big reason as well. I done well last year, I think. Yeah. Especially at the beginning, just settling in and enjoying it. 
yeah. like him, Messi and, and Meg, I love them all. They was, well, I still do now that they're, they're brilliant. Well, you owe him 300 quid, don't you? And that's what... Yeah, I've told him that I'm not sending it to you. I'll, I'll take you out for dinner, but I've not seen you in ages, so... <laughs> I think that's a fair deal, to be honest. Not, you're not having the cash. The second thing is, if you take him yeah. at like McDonald's, you can go 30 times. No, I don't know. I don't... He won't be very happy with that. He's strict on his diet. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. So am I. <laughs> I, can't, I can't see that. <laughs> I am can't gonna see that at all. He used to be my chef. He did? Yeah. So what did you eat for the two months you were on your own? Um, I'm actually not bad at cooking, you know. You're not? Yeah. Can see, who's, your, who's your go-to chef now? Yeah, I actually cooked for months what? and he couldn't believe it. I'm actually not bad. Hmm. Nice. So, transfer window. At yep. what point did you know Hibs was the was the club? I, I had interest from clips from Hibs really early on when Maloney was gaffer from like May. Hmm. And I just net wherever I was going, I didn't want to rush into anything. I, I knew that loads of transfers ended late. Yeah. And I just didn't want to be at a club early doors thinking, ah, oh, like I, I might have got somewhere else that would have been happier somewhere else. I always always wanted to leave it. Yeah. Not as late as it did go, but probably yeah, took the last month for the window and just to see what was <coughs> sorry, what was available and just to make sure I made the right decision because I, I had such a good year I didn't want to go somewhere and not enjoy it because Yeah. The, the year on and off the pitch was just so good. So it was always gonna be tough to go somewhere and and enjoy myself as much. So it was it was always gonna be a big move and I didn't want to rush anything. I didn't want to have any regrets. You started the season at Swindon, didn't you? I think you played five. Yeah, yeah right? we didn't five. games. I don't think. Uh, no, it was. It wasn't many. I think. I think five games across the across the first month. Obviously, you left at the end of the, the the first month. But there's one game that we've got questions about in particular. Um, <laughs> thing is, you already know. I can tell by your face, you already know. Yeah, I wonder what that game is. Yeah. What What happened at Salford? It wasn't a great day, was it? No, it wasn't. To be no. fair, it was a terrible start to the season for Swindon overall. I think, like up until probably late September, it didn't click for the or it didn't start to click for the squad. Anyone? Yeah, that, that, that's that Salford game. I don't remember much about the game. I remember I thought I should have had a penalty. Mm -hmm. I remember my main thing was <clears throat> off off the ball for the first thirty minutes. I was getting battered. That like, couldn't come and get on the ball because I was just getting, I was just getting hit, grabbed, couldn't move, and and it was so obvious for me. And I, I was saying so calmly. The most annoying thing is I'd lost my temper so many times in the season, in the season before, and got away with it. Only got yellows, but I'd get a yellow after like proper giving it to the ref. And I knew that I had to change because I also wanted to move as well. And I knew that I was getting a bit of a reputation. Yeah. I knew that I had to stop getting to the yellows and definitely not get sent off. But sending offs were never in my mind because I'd never been sent off before. And I remember so calmly saying to her, I was saying it repeatedly, but I was going up to the fourth, I was going up to the ref, I was going up to the lines and saying, please, can you watch off the ball? Like, this is getting ridiculous now. Like, please watch off the ball. And the yellow card I got, I remember word for word going up to the ref saying, please, can you tell the fourth? I remember saying, I, I know you can't see it, but please tell the fourth to watch off the ball. And he turned around and went, I'm sick of you. Yellow card. And it was so early in. And I thought, this ain't going to be my day, this. And the second yellow, the, the second yellow, uh, when, he, when the whistle went, I thought I'd been given a foul because he, he clears the ball and jumps into me with his body. And uh, they, to be fair, Salford, they came with a plan. They they came to get me sent off and and it worked. I think the, worked. the game was still nil-nil, but... Do you think that would have happened more <laughs> the season, this season if you did remain in League 2, that you would have had a massive, massive target on your back through the season there? Yeah, but I had that for the majority of the end of last season, so I don't think it ever bothered me. It never really got too much. That that day was one of the calmest I've actually been, and people were thought people saw me constantly giving it to the lino and, and ref and forth, so they thought I would have been like cutting him off and that, but I wasn't. It was like it was the most calm I'd ever spoke to a ref, and I thought this, I can't believe I'm being so calm, and this is the the game I've been sent off. So it's probably the nicest you... I've ever spoke to officials, and they're the ones that sent me off. What so what happened? Leave... I was gonna say what happened after you get sent off? I think it was like quite a natural 
reaction for people that aren't happy with their sending off. I think sometimes you get sent off and you'd understand it. And I, I really couldn't understand it. And I was fuming and I went in with Jonah and Hoops and got a little bit angry, maybe like through a couple of things and that. <clears throat> and I, I just remember hearing stuff in the tunnel and thinking it was, it was half time. And I, I just wanted to go and speak to the ref and just say like, why me kind of thing and just let it out. And they wasn't in there. And I think people have seen what happened. I picked up a protein shake and, and threw it in anger at the wall. And whether it went over his suit or not, I will never know because I never went back in there. But it was an empty protein shake. It was there was like dry powder in there. It could never have caused that much trouble. Ah, oh, right. So we didn't. That that's that's not what got reported. We, it was just protein shakes. Everyone thinks you've thrown a full protein. Yeah, it's one of them shakes so... that has a little capsule at the bottom of dry protein that's gone against the wall. So he maybe gets like a bit of crumbs on his his suit that can be brushed off. I think. Obviously, you can't do that. And I was going to say, who has a full protein shake sat there? For forty five minutes, it'd be that'd be rancid, wouldn't it? Yeah, it was just powder, so like yeah. obviously you can't do it. And yeah, well, I don't think it was as bad as as people want the story to be. It's probably let them down a bit that, but that was about it, really. I mean, if anything, it kind of clears it up because it was it was a weird situation. Like like Grant says, why was there a full protein shake kind of just sat waiting to be lobbed against the wall? Yeah, I just um, thought really like my, I remember after the game saying like that has to get investigated. I, I remember thinking like we'll complain to <coughs> the FA about the the refereeing and that. I didn't think I'd be the one getting in trouble. So when I mean, you went from a one game to a four game, yeah, you, know, you got you got a, again. you got an additional three matches uh, yeah. and a, and a fine uh, after you admitted to aggressive and improper behaviour. It says, what are those hearings like? I don't know, you don't go to them. Or oh, did you not go in there? Did you not no. actually have to go? You don't go to them. Ah, fair play. I well, don't really... you, end up at, you end up going to Hibs in a half one in the morning announcement from Hibs because from what we were hearing and we were, we were getting a lot of stuff from both sides, like from the Swindon side, from the Hibs side, it was an absolute shit show on the day like we no one knew if you were going to actually get this move through was there a part of you during that day that thought i'm not going to get this this is not going to happen i remember when it was two days before it was tuesday night i think it shot on the thursday mm. sorry <coughs> shot on the thursday and um i remember that's when i got a call since like bid's been accepted it's all done they like the club wanna. No, it, it was sorry. Hibs definitely want a bid. They they want to sign you. Yeah. And I had the day off on a Wednesday. Chelsea played Southampton Tuesday. I'd like gone to Chelsea game, gone back to my mate's house, and he was off work. And we spent a Wednesday, and it was like Hibs, like what were we thinking. And I remember thinking like it's so good here, but like it looks it looks really good. And I spoke to a couple of people that had been at Hibs, and they said great things about it. I remember going on YouTube and, and watching the celebrations from the cup final where they sing Sunshine on Leaf. And I remember watching that and I looked at my mate and he was like, that's a bit of me that is. That that looks fucking unbelievable. I want to be a part of that. And and that's what sold me, really. Mm -hmm. So now I thought it was going to be straightforward. The, <coughs> the next night, like a bid got accepted, all terms were done. I expected to like get on a 7 a.m. flight. So I remember waking up at like five, expecting to text my agent with all the details, woke up at five, nothing. Got delayed a little bit and he's like, right, we'll fly at 11, go to the stadium, get your boots and that. So I've gone to the stadium, expecting to fly at 11, just not hearing anything. He's like, something's happened, something. And I don't really know what's happening. And he's like, right, get on a three o'clock flight. So I've like rushed to Bristol. <coughs> Fucking hell, sorry. And, um, <laughs> got on a flight, landed at like four and it was like, just just wait there I'll, and we'll know what's going on when you land. And I remember being there for hours and then hearing stuff about Birmingham. So maybe Birmingham a bit in. And like, where would you rather go? And then it was like up in the air with Birmingham and I'm thinking I could end up missing out on both here. And then I'm, I think it got to about nine o'clock, I got picked up, went to Hibs. <coughs> It was still a little bit like Birmingham could happen. They're happy if you're not doing medical and that. And then well, I decided to go with Hibs. It, 
it seemed like the right thing to do and mm. done the medicals, thought I'd sign, rang my parents, rang a couple of friends and that said it was all done, was buzzing and then it got to about half an hour after the window had shut and they said, oh, Swindon have missed the, the deadline, so we've got to appeal to FIFA. Oh. So then it took another day where I was there. There was three options. They said, FIFA decide there's no appeal in it. It's either you're signed, you can play. You're signed, you can't play till January. Or that transfer has not gone through, you have to go back. So then there was an additional day after, even when it got announced at half one, where I was like, I still don't know what's going to happen. Also, when they announced it, it wasn't actually confirmed. <coughs> that still wasn't point. done. No. Wow. Yeah, wow, indeed. And I remember there was a game on the Saturday, and I remember being in the hotel, and the gaffer gave me a phone call saying, look, welcome, it's all gone through. And I actually remember sat in the hotel, and I was buzzing for the next day for the game, and I'd not commented on it, I'd not said anything, and I'd done a post on social media about leaving and signing, and <coughs> that was the first time it had proper, like, sunk in that, that I'd mm. left, like, such an amazing thing. And I, I, was, I was so excited to start at Hibs that... When I went in in the training ground in the stadium, it just seemed like a proper club where I'd been at League Two for so many years, and yeah, they were set up as well as they could be. But you are at a League Two club, so you train at a cricket ground, and it felt like such a big club when I went there, and I was I was so excited. But it, it sunk in that I'd left such an amazing thing. Yeah, yeah, and I think I think you know, we, 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 we're not going to go too far into Hibs because it's still a season that's ongoing. So we're yeah. going to do some Hib, we're going to do some questions. I've got questions from Hibs fans um, and we've got, we've got some from Swindon fans as well. <laughs> Hibs fan, his Hibs, Hibs fan question that I got here. Which player would you say you've kind of gotten on best with since your arrival? Um, I wouldn't say there's like a standout where I'm really close to one person. You've not got a pain relationship. <clears throat> no, I've not. I'm not like knocking on someone's gaff most nights, asking for dinner and that. But it, it, I am really close to quite a lot of the boys, and it, it is a good group, and they've welcomed me in from the get go. Really, I think someone comes in and and they're getting bought from League Two, and they come in wearing the stuff I do, and they have the personality that I do. It could have been easy for me to rub people up the wrong way, but they've been they've been all been good with me, especially like coming in and having such a personality without really playing and not bringing the goals and assists. I think I got away with stuff last year because I was delivering on the pitch and I've, I've not really delivered on the pitch yet. So to come with a personality and, and the way I am and not deliver, it could be easy to rub people up the wrong way. But all the players have been great with me and mm. and it is a good group there. Yeah. Well, that that's a note that this this, this Hibs fan actually put. He, he said just, you know, also you're a cracking player. You just need some goals and you'll be flying. Yeah, and goals think, goals make the goal the the world go round. I think they do. They do. Um, I see one. Have you tried haggis yet? Someone's asked. Nah, fuck that. I'm quite I'm quite fussy with food. It's. I'll say this to you now. You won't regret it. It's nah, phenomenal. It's not, it's not for me that. <laughs> <laughs> so no to haggis. There's a headline. Yeah, <laughs> Harry McCurdy slags off national dish. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's how it would get written as well. Yeah. So brilliant. I'm I'm gonna ask the questions as we've been asked them. Yeah. Because and you can answer these as honestly as as you like, uh, you know. And I get that some of them are gonna be harder for you to answer than others, but oh, I'm always honest. Yeah. No, but don't be too honest. Um. This. <laughs> so, first question. You there's no way you can answer this question. But so it says, when are you coming back to Swindon? And could you see yourself working well with Charlie Austin at Swindon? I don't know. I think he thinks I've got a time machine. Like, I, I had a great time at Swindon and I loved it, but I've just signed a free year deal and I've done nothing yet. So, t to leave here and mm. a place where I was welcomed so well at the beginning by the fans and, and the players to just come here, do nothing for four months and fuck off, like, I wouldn't sit right with me. and Yeah. You never know what's going to happen in the future, but it's very much, I don't know if it's unfinished or unstarted business here at the moment. And Look, I still look out for swimming results, want them to do well. I still speak to quite a few of the boys on that, but I've seen quite a bit of excitement about Charlie Austin signing and I'm not quite sure I'm in the same category as, as someone that's had such a good career to go in and 
back to Swindon. Do you know what I mean? I, I was there a year and I really enjoyed it. But if they sign Austin, it'd be great. I think they're fourth in the league after the win on Saturday, and I'd love to see them get promoted. Mm. Do you think you're if they get promoted? Do you think you'll be looking at it going? Could have been me. Nah, no, not at all. Like I would love them to get promoted, and I'm gutted that we didn't get promoted with such a special group. But I would never like not want them to get promoted because I wasn't there and, and a part of it. Like it's such a good group and and fan base and staff and and board that the whole club really. So I, I'd love them to get promoted this year. Yeah. <coughs> To be fair, in that little answer there, you've answered quite a lot of these questions. So that's good because one of the things that someone they also wanted to know was what were your, what was your opinion on the Swindon fan base? Yeah, I think it was it was, it was easy for the Swindon fans to love me because I'd, I'd done so well. I remember going in at the beginning and and getting a bit of stick on social media and at games at the beginning, and no one really knew who I was. And I was starting games. And I, I didn't really I didn't play bad. I scored on my debut, but then went a bit without a goal. Mm. And then, I don't know, something just clicked and they, they was amazing with me. They made me want to do well. They were the first fans that I probably properly got on with since Stevenage. Yeah. And I just I just loved it. One of the big things that I got sent through to me, I'm, I'm going to almost say this word for word that came through from a Swindon fan. says, what a character Harry is. The world needs more McCarty's. I'll never forget just how good he was with all of the kids and the fans. Always had time for everyone. I There were hundreds always waiting to see him. A lot of people never saw that side to himself, but I noticed it all the time there. I'm always up for having fun overall. Just a genuine good guy. Yeah, I think people like, they'll see how I am on the pitch and that. And I, I do act up a little bit on the pitch and I enjoy that, but that, that is a job really. And I'm a football fan as well. Not much players mean to kids and... Mm. I've been the same. I still love them now, like the players at Chelsea. So <coughs> that's one of the. Yeah, it was, I, I just enjoyed doing it. Really, is yeah, so this is where the questions get not silly, but you know, this is some. These are genuine questions from Swindon fans. You were always spotted in Swindon's Tesco's. What's your go-to meal deal? Well, that like sandwich and that. I thought I'd just get pennies to make me one. <laughs> Payne used to make like bagels of chicken, avocado, and and Philadelphia. I used to love them. I thought you were fussy. That's that's not fussy. <clears throat> no, I, I'm I'm I'm. If I don't like, I like stuff. But if I don't like it, then I'm fussy. I wouldn't try something I didn't think I was gonna like. Yeah, yeah. I didn't need meal deal. Like Penny was was my chef. Yeah. Uh, how many pairs of Crocs do you own, and do you have a favourite colour? No, I just got two pairs. I actually lost one. So I'm going to have to say the purple ones I've got are the only ones that I've got left. I love that you like Crocs. Liam, you're not a Croc guy at all, are you? Not in the slightest. I've got a pair of black Crocs. I'm all about the Croc life. Yeah, they're just comfy, ain't they? Yeah, nothing better. Slide them on, that's you done. Yeah, I, I like them. I'm not about the Croc life. I think that is absolutely bizarre. Um, yeah, and then what I'll do is I'm just going to give you some notes that people sort of sent in here. This it probably won't make no sense because I'm reading it as she replied it to me. So she just put brilliant. Looking forward to that one. This is replying to the tweet that we said you were coming on. To and miss that little maverick here. Would love to have half of his enthusiasm for life and the confidence of his self worth. Qualities to be admired. Hope he never changes the little rascal. Yeah, that's one thing. Uh, I, I might look back when I'm older and think, fucking, no, I, I wish I had changed to like. Nah, don't change. Set, we got maybe maybe if you change, you become the same. Trouble at clubs and. I probably would have find it easier to get clubs, but it 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 will also be hard to have regrets. When I've had such a good time and on and off the pitch at so many clubs, and my life's been so good. And I think it is it is really difficult to enjoy your life and and have a good life. And honestly, my, mine's so good that it's it's hard to have regrets. I've met some great people that I wouldn't have met certain people if I'd done things differently. So it would be really difficult to look back when I was older and. And have have regrets really. I think that's probably the perfect ending, Grant, to be honest. I like one, thing, one one thing is my personal one about about that and and enjoying yourself and having a good life. I, I see that a lot of people don't and obviously mental health's a massive thing and I don't yeah. struggle with it at all. But my favourite thing on on Instagram is 
or Twitter when people will abuse me and then I'll click on their profile and they preach about mental health. That's that's my favourite thing. That really cheers me up, that does. Or that. they get be kind in their profile. I have a good smile at that. Yeah. And there's so <laughs> many people that do it. And I think a lot of people are just genuinely deluded. And I try not to have arguments with fans. Sometimes I can't help myself. And and I'll say this, the odd thing that I probably shouldn't say. And I don't like doing it mainly because I think they get so much satisfaction out of me replying. And it made me laugh that there was a Port Vale fan giving me stick saying I'd never I'd never won the playoffs and they'd won the League Two playoffs. I remember sat thinking that you saw Port it. Vale on the greatest day of your life is is a playoff final, which is it would have been the best day of my playing career. But like as a fan, I've seen my team win everything, like Premier Leagues, European Cups, Europa Leagues, FA Cups, League Cups, and like Club World Cup. Part of the playoffs, and yeah, I didn't get to win, and I was one of the reasons that you won it. But like. If you're talking to me about like what you've seen your team do, then I'll, I'll seen us do everything. If you're talking about like if you want to go on a personal level, what you've done in football, then I've not done a lot at all. But I've had some great days, and I'd say the highlights of most people that message me are like probably scoring a volley at Power League with their mates. So yeah, when they when they argue, I just want to let them know that when I'm replying and, and arguing back, I don't actually care about them. And, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have that satisfaction thinking I see a lot of people think, Oh, like we're rent free in your head like New like, Swindon. Let's go Swindon last season. Damn. So who had the worst taste in music? Worst taste in music. Um I don't know, I was quite selfish to be honest. Like I didn't let anyone else play their music. So I think you... a lot of people would say me because I was so selfish <laughs> as a DJ. I'd just play everything that I wanted to play. And there's some songs now that even like they'll come on on shuffle or in the car in a playlist and it just takes me back to like being on the coach and we had such a good team spirit and like after wins in the dressing room and before games and i think music was a big part of like what we used to do together and like they'd be singing like dancing willow would always be clapping for some reason and what was the yeah playlist? i think a lot of people would say me because i was the only person that did play music what was your playlist it would be the most random pre-match playlist you've ever seen. There'd be songs in there where, like, say I've gone out for dinner and it'd be somewhere in London and the music could be a bit funky and I'd be like, boys, I love that and I'll shazam it and I won't listen to it again and until the Saturday we'd be in the dress room and people be like, what the fuck is this song? How annoyed did they get when Blues the Colour came on? <laughs> nah, none of that. We, we used to come out to <laughs> London's Calling. My last song before every game would be London Calling. So... Yeah. Yeah, nice. I think it would say me. Who's the worst dressed at the club? <laughs> I mean, I think um, we're asking the wrong person. You don't here, need though. to think about this. You do not need to think about this. Go back to the play. Worst, uh, the yeah, play so who the worst dress was. There was a couple. Oh, without doubt, Wardy. Was he worst doubt. player of the season awards? No, honestly, I remember we had we had our own player of the season awards, and Wardy's wore this this burgundy leather jacket and it's the worst thing I've ever seen. It, it looked like the seat in a barber chair, like proper rolls. It was horrific. He had the worst cover I've ever seen. <laughs> Who had the worst trim? Worst trim? What do you think last season? There was a couple of bad trims. Um, worst trim? <laughs> I'd struggle not to give it Wardy again, you know. Or Jojo, Wardy or Jojo, the keepers, they had shocking barnets last year. <laughs> so who picked up the most stupid fines? That's got to be you. Nah, Kane. Kane and LB, them boys were getting paid too much from Villa. They just used to give it away. What were they picking up fines for? It's just pure sloppiness. Yeah. Who was always the first out in the bleep test? In the bleep test? Excluding keepers. No, no. Ward used to join in and he'd fucking beat most of us. He was fit. Um, oh, I don't know. I can't really remember, to be honest. Fair. Lastly, yeah, I don't hopefully know. Hopefully you remember this one. Or maybe, hopefully you don't remember this one. Yeah. Who is the longest in the shower? Can I lie and say pain, <laughs> <laughs> I expected you with zero hesitation to look deadpan in the camera and just go, me. 
Nah, nah. There's too many birds out there that know I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, going with Jack Finn. Nah, it, it's it's Granty, but I don't want to give him the praise. <laughs> I really don't want to give him the praise. You don't deserve it. Right. Well, <laughs> honestly, thank you so much for it. It's it's really it throws right. a I've but... enjoyed it. I'm, I am glad. I'm glad you've enjoyed it, and I'm glad you didn't get pissed off at the the seven hours thing. And you nah, know, it's, it's all it's all good. That's Payne's fault. Well, Grant, you want to walk us out? I certainly will. Everyone, thanks again. Once, uh, thanks one, thanks everyone again. I can't fucking talk. I'll start that again. We're already editing a lot. Guys, um, thank you so much for listening once again. This has been a hell of a lot of fun. Um, yeah, don't forget, follow us all of our socials, smash that like button, um, rate us five stars on Spotify, comment whatever the hell you want. None of us care what you comment. It doesn't count for anything. You can genuinely come Follow us all wankers if you want on Spotify. Um, it gives us a well. it's, yeah, it gives us a bit of a laugh. <laughs> um, Harry, just to say again, thanks a lot for coming on, mate. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Absolute pleasure having you on. I've nah, enjoyed it. Cheers. Cheers, mate. We've been the Lower League Look. <laughs>